thank him. Thank him for visiting us tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you for visiting us, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, coming among us. Speaking to us, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. If you have your Bibles, we want to, um, the Lord has, uh, I believe, given me a word for tonight. Hallelujah. I believe it'll speak to somebody. But I, I want to look in First Samuel chapter 17. Once again, I apologize for all of the reading that I, I need to do as we start off. But anyway, the word is good. <clears throat> faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we'll build our faith. Amen. But First Samuel chapter um, 17. Just reminding you that um, <clears throat> they are having uh, healing services Friday and Saturday uh, night at New Beginnings uh, Tabernacle in uh, Cross City at Pastor Sammy's church. We're going to not be here Saturday night on prayer. Uh, we'll cancel the 6 o'clock Saturday night um, prayer service and we'll go over there and be with them. All those that want to go, just let us know. We'll try to get the address out on Facebook so you know exactly how to get there. But uh, we're going to go over there and be with them and just uh, ha have a uh, <clears throat> move of God. Amen. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 17, if you're there and ready to go. Also, Sunday morning, Lisa and I will be covering services in Jacksonville for Pastor Logan. Um, but um, my, uh, my son will be preaching that morning. We'll be back that night for uh, teen takeover service. And uh, so just uh, be mindful of that. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. It reads like this. Now David was the son of that Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of the three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and the next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Does everybody understand that this is after David has been anointed by Samuel, uh, after the oil has come on him and after the Holy Ghost has come on him uh, to be king? Does everybody understand that? All right. And so that's when this is taking place. And David he went back to his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine, talking about Goliath, drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. And Jesse said to David, his son, take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and uh, these ten loaves and run to the camp of thy brethren and carry <clears throat> these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousands and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. And now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli fighting uh, with the Philistines and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and he shouted for the battle and for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array army against army and David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran to the army and came and saluted his brethren and he talked with them behold uh, I'm sorry as he talked with them behold there came up the champion the Philistine of Gath Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines spake according to the same words and David heard them and all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid the men of Israel said have you seen this man that's come up surely to defy Israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches give him his daughter uh, to marry and make his father's house free in Israel. In other words, they'll not have to pay any taxes in Israel. 
And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Hallelujah. The people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled. It was kindled against David. And he said, Why come thou down hither? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Can you put uh, the next verses up there? Verse 29. I'm sorry. Did I not tell you to get them? They're in here. Hallelujah. Just put verse 29 and, and, and uh, 30. Just go ahead and get them because I might reference them later. Amen. Verse 29 and 30. I thought they were in here. Maybe not. Hallelujah. Let me know when you got it. Verse 29 and 30. He says, I know thy pride. And he says, uh, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Verse 30. And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former matter. Apologize again for all the verses. I don't usually have that much in my opening text. But anyway, I needed to read all that because it sets up what we're going to deal with tonight. Amen. Tonight I want to talk to you from the subject. And this is a long title as well. Everything's long tonight. The message is going to be long. The service is going to be long. It's just all long. All right. So it is. Get over it. Hallelujah. But the title of the message tonight is Peeling Back the Layers of Your Moment. Peeling Back the Layers of your moment let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you lord for everything that you have done tonight your presence being in this house and god we're asking god once again for uh just a great measure of your anointing to come on this vessel of clay think through our minds speak through our lips god and let us uh, hear a word and receive a word that will take root in the ground of our heart and bring forth fruit father in the mighty name of jesus somebody say amen, amen. peeling back the layers of your moment <clears throat> i believe god works in moments divine moments somebody say divine moments Hallelujah. I can look back on my life and see how I am where I am right now because of moments. Moments where I may have met somebody. Moments where I have prayed for somebody and it became something something grew out of that. Moments where I've ministered somewhere and and relationships and things that catapulted me to where I am now took place where I was ministering or or there were moments when I just went to church services I had divine moments that altered my life Amen. hallelujah and and to be honest I've I've had divine moments that had nothing to do with church or anything spiritual I've had divine moments eating at a restaurant Hallelujah. I've had divine moments going to a, a, a grocery store. I've had divine moments. Matter of fact, the moment that started my journey to Florida was at a family reunion that we were having. And I met someone and it was a family member, uh, Pastor Joe there, and that began my journey here. And one of the reasons that I'm here in Florida. But moments, moments, God will direct your life and move in your life in moments and i believe that there are pivotal moments in your walk with god and what pivotal moments are in your walk with god is those moments that change everything in your life to the point that that your life is never the same hallelujah there are pivotal moments in the life of the believer and in these pivotal moments, as I was kind of mentioning earlier, 
you get catapulted, so to speak, into your destiny. And in these pivotal moments, there are things that you end up leaving in your life and never going back to. There are things that change and they never change back because of these one pivotal divine moments. And what I came to really deal with tonight is the fact that if, if we're not careful, we can be in a place spiritually and mentally that we miss these moments. I was going to call this, don't miss your moment, but the Lord began to uh, reveal something else to me, and that's why it's called peel back the layers of your moment. But if we're not careful, there's, there's, a, there's a spiritual mentality that, that or, or there, there's just a mentality and a, and a spiritual place that we can be in uh, that if we're not careful will cause us to miss these pivotal moments in my life. Hallelujah. So my goal tonight is I, I really want to give you just a few things from this text that will help you not to miss your moments hallelujah here in this chapter where where we just read in this text this is where and and hopefully you understand this this is where david kills goliath and how many understands that that the killing of goliath was a pivotal moment in the divine destiny of david it was a pivotal moment when david killed goliath david's power and favor with God was first seen and put on display to the people who would eventually make him king. All right. Amen. This was something that showed them in that moment that this was a leader that they needed. Not only that, but because of David killing Goliath in this moment, this was a moment that would cause David to go back no more to, the fa to his father's sheep and he would remain the armor bearer of King Saul. If you study the life of David, you find out that after David is anointed by the prophet, he goes back to the shepherd's field. Then when Saul is troubled by the demons, they call him out of the shepherd's field to play his harp for Saul in the palace. He plays his harp and the demons leave Saul and then he goes back to the shepherd's field. When he comes here to check on his brothers to come into this moment where he kills Goliath, we understand from the text, we even read it, that he came from the shepherd's field. But after killing Goliath, he would go no more back to the shepherd's field. Hallelujah. He would stay close to his destiny. Hallelujah. It was a breakthrough moment for David. Anybody need a breakthrough moment? Oh, hallelujah. God will give you a breakthrough moment where your life in that one moment changes forever i don't know if anybody feels it but this is kind of exciting to even hear about to even think about that god could put you in one single moment of one specific day of one specific week of one specific month of one specific year and alter your life forever oh he's a good god a big god he's smarter than you Not only would David go back no more to his father's sheep, he would also through this moment make a covenant with Jonathan, Saul's son, that would help protect him from Saul when Saul turned on him because he recognized that God was giving him the throne and taking it from Saul. Hallelujah. It was a moment that made a divine connection with Jonathan. When Jonathan saw David, uh, standing there with the head of the giant in his hand talking to his father and he saw all of this happen his heart got intertwined with David's heart not in a perverted sexual way but in a godly covenant love kind of way the way Jesus loves the church 
Oh, hallelujah. This, I mean, this was a moment for David. This was a moment for David. So I believe that God's got pivotal moments for us. I believe God's got moments that will alter our life forever. I believe God has got moments that will catapult us into our destiny. Moments that will give us breakthroughs. Moments that will pull us out of obscurity. Pull us out of darkness. Pull us out of wherever we've been. And bring us into everything God's got for us. Oh, hallelujah. But if you don't want to miss your moment... Here's what you've got to understand tonight is you've got to understand the layers of a moment. Somebody say the layers of a moment. Layers of a moment. Hallelujah. And not only do you got to understand the layers of the moment, you've got to understand how God peels back the layers of the moment to get you to your moment. Your moment is often covered in layers that God has to peel back and God has to remove so that you can see your moment and step into your moment and experience your moment. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, Pastor? Let me just keep on going with this. This was not just a divine moment when David killed Goliath. Watch this. This was David's kingdom assignment. It was what he was anointed for. Look at somebody and say, I'm anointed for something. Ooh, hallelujah. Look back at him and say, you're anointed for something. Oh, hallelujah. This was not just David's moment. This was his kingdom assignment. This was what he was anointed for. Remember, we said prior to this, Samuel had already anointed him, poured oil on him, gallons of oil on him. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, came up upon him from that day forward. And so what we've got to understand that Samuel was anointing him to be king and be the deliverer of Israel. Hallelujah. So this was a moment that he was anointed for. This was a moment that he was assigned for. And so here's what we've got to understand. This moment was covered up in the layer of David's kingdom assignment. Sometimes buried in what you're anointed for will be your moment. Oh, I'm talking hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes buried in what you're anointed for, buried down in your assignment is your moment. There are times that you will just be doing your assignment, but you will discover your moment that will change everything. Oh, hallelujah. But also, according to our text, we read that when David showed up to this place, that would become his moment, he was there to deliver food to his brothers and check on them and bring word back to his daddy. So here we see that when David comes into his moment, he has a spiritual assignment that he's anointed for, but he also has a natural assignment from his father. So look at the layers of David's moment. Oh, hallelujah. Here's David, and he's got this pivotal moment with Goliath that's going to change everything. It's going to become a breakthrough moment. It's going to become a life-altering moment. It's going to catapult him into his destiny. But that moment is covered up by his kingdom assignment. He doesn't at first see the moment. He just sees the assignment. He just sees this uncircumcised Philistine that's defying the armies of the living God that must come down. Oh, but buried. Oh, that, that kingdom assignment. That moment is buried in the kingdom assignment, but the kingdom assignment is buried, oh, hallelujah, in his natural assignment from his father to go check on his brothers. Oh, hallelujah. So your moments can be, if this, if this is, is if this is my moment, if it represents my moment, the moment many times can be buried in a kingdom assignment. But sometimes the kingdom assignment can be buried 
in natural things. Uh, the layers of your moment, hallelujah. The layers of your moment, hallelujah. And so, and so here you are and you've got a breakthrough moment but you can't see it because of the kingdom assignment but sometimes you can't see the kingdom assignment because of the natural things that are going on in your life. Is anybody following me? And so here's David and before David can get to his moment he's got to get to his kingdom assignment. But before he can get to his kingdom assignment, David has to confront what's going on in the natural. He's got to figure out how do I deal with my daddy in order to kill this giant in order to get to my moment. Uh, what do I do about my dad? Hallelujah. Many of you got a moment on the way. You've got a break. For, can I stop right there just a minute and prophesy to somebody in this house? You've got a breakthrough moment. You've got a moment, a life altering moment. You've got something God's about to bring you into that is going to shift everything. But first you've got to step into your kingdom assignment you've got to walk out that anointing that's on your life you got to walk out that thing that God has called you to do are you hearing what I'm saying but before that you've got to confront whatever's going on in the natural that's keeping you from your and so here's David before he can peel back the layers and get to his moment the first layer he's got to start off with is the natural what am I going to do with this natural thing that I've got going on? What am I going to do with this natural chore? What am I going to do with this thing that was I feel like I'm supposed to accomplish in the natural? Right? I've got to confront that. Many people never get to their moment because they can't. They don't know how to peel back the natural layer. Mm. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So many times we miss our moments because we don't allow God to peel back all the layers. It was, watch me please, are y'all still with me? It was, I'm not looking at the clock tonight, so I'm not worried about time. If the kids come running in here, I'll yell at them, make them sit down, or I'll kick them out. Hallelujah. But we will finish this word. It was the natural assignment of his father. Watch this. It was the natural assignment of his father that got him positioned to step into his kingdom assignment that he was anointed for, which caused him to enter into his moment. Many times, God is using our natural situations, our natural natural circumstances to position us for kingdom assignments which ultimately become our moments God will take the natural things going on in your life and you don't understand it but the natural things are positioning you for kingdom things but the kingdom thing is positioning you for a life altering moment. Mm -mm. But we miss our moments because we miss our assignments and we miss our assignments because we don't allow God to peel back the layer of what's going on in the natural. So we can see what he's doing spiritually through the natural. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. It's Turn off and go home. Hallelujah. Are y'all y'all getting it? Does anybody understand? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Many times we miss our moments because we miss our assignments and we miss our assignments because we don't allow God to cause us to see through the natural and see what he's spiritually doing in the natural thing. We're so caught up on the problems and we're so caught up on the natural stuff that we fail to see that even in the natural God is working to bring us into something that's trying to bring us into something that's trying to bring us into a life altering moment. You've got to let God peel back. Uh, oh God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get so caught up on what's going on in the natural that we fail to realize 
that God is doing something spiritually through it. So the layers remain. The layers remain and we never uncover the breakthroughs we could be having because we let them stay buried in the layers. Many times buried underneath our natural everyday chores, our natural everyday assignments. I got to go to work. I got to go to the grocery store. I got to pay bills. I got to do this. Even buried beneath the everyday natural circumstances and things and issues that we go through, we must understand there can be divine kingdom assignments. You think you're just going to the store. You think it's just another Monday at work. You think that you're just going to your friend's house to play cards. Ah, but you don't understand you're about to preach to somebody. You're about to meet somebody. You're about to do something in the kingdom. And, and you don't understand it and you don't see it. But that moment could very well be the moment that changes everything. And launches everything in your life. And ah, oh, and you'll be thinking God that I made it to the peas and carrots at the grocery store today and you'll be thinking God I went to work today and I thank God that this happened and I thank God that that happened because I found out that it was just a layer to my moment. Oh is anybody hearing me in this house? Oh God. It's just a layer to your moment. I, can I prophesy that to somebody? I don't know what you're going through right now. This ain't in my notes but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't know what you're dealing with in the natural what you've got to do in the natural but God said don't forget it's just a layer to your moment yeah. Yeah. Woo. Ah. there you are thinking that thinking that you're just going through what you're going through and the devil's just fighting because the devil's fighting no this is a layer to my oh yeah oh y'all are woke up now you're getting it all right hallelujah 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 it's just a layer to my moment Paul and Silas in a Philippian jail uh, Paul and Silas they cast the devil out of a woman who was a soothsayer, a, a fortune teller. She brought a lot of money to these men. When she got saved, these men lost their income. They got mad at the preachers. They grabbed the preachers up, brought them before the Roman magistrates and said these preachers are causing trouble they told a bunch of lies on them said they're they're, they're preaching things and saying things to for us the, that it's not lawfully for us as roman citizens to do and they got the magistrates stirred up the magistrates grabbed them and beat them and whipped them and threw them into this prison no trial or nothing beat them whipped them put them in the dungeon of the prison and there they sit with stripes on their back their hands locked up and their feet locked up here they are suffering here here they are in pain. Here they are being rejected. Here they are being pushed out. All they wanted to do was to deliver a woman. But here they are in a Philippian jail. Ah, but buried beneath the persecution was a kingdom assignment to praise God. Sometimes your assignment is just to praise God in the hell. Sometimes your assignment is just to praise God in the the pain. Anybody know what it is to praise God in the buried beneath that persecution was a kingdom assignment to praise and sing in the middle of a dungeon oh, but that assignment oh, it brought a moment when the glory came and shook the jail <laughs> And a jailer found out that all of the prison doors opened and the, all of the chains broke and, and he thought everybody had left so he was getting ready to kill himself because that would be better than what the Roman government would do to him for letting all of these prisoners escape. But Paul cried out, nobody's left. We're all here. 
the jailer stopped and turned to Paul and Silas in that moment and said what must I do to be saved Paul preached to him Paul preached to his house they all got saved and baptized and what was persecution became a kingdom assignment and that kingdom assignment became a moment that birthed the first Philippian church and if you read in the book of Philippians you find out they were the first ones to partner with Paul and all Paul was sitting back saying thank God for the jail thank God somebody better thank God for the persecution that has brought you into your moment oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah they peeled back layers they peeled back with layers and and sometimes it's like Joseph the the layers real thick Joseph the persecution uh, the natural layers real thick I mean his brothers turned on him sold him into slavery he became a slave then he was falsely accused in slavery by Potiphar's wife and falsely thrown into prison I mean that that layer of the natural where his assignment was buried was thick sometimes that outer layer gets thick anybody know what I'm saying yeah but he got to his assignment because he didn't give up he didn't lose his joy he didn't forget about the dream is anybody with me in this place this ain't in my notes either but sometimes if you want to peel back the layers to get to your moment you gotta get determined you you gotta get some tenacity you gotta just get a willingness not to give up you gotta get to the place where you don't need a glorious service you don't need a prophecy you don't need a shake from the Holy Ghost you don't need an electrocution from somebody laying hands on you to get you to make it all you need is just to wake up in the morning because you're determined is there anybody determined anybody just flat out made up your mind if I die waiting on the Lord I'm gonna keep on waiting cause I'm not giving up I'm just <laughs> swear swear that's where, that's, where, that's where Joseph was. Uh, and, he, and he finally peeled back the layer of the natural and he found his kingdom assignment, which was to pray for the interpretation of the dream of Pharaoh's former butler while he was in prison because the natural was positioning him for his kingdom assignment. And, and he interpreted the dream of, 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 of the butler, but even that, that, that layer got thick because it was two years before the butler that got his job job back that's what Joseph interpreted his dream to me that he was getting his job back and he told him he said when you get your job back uh, you remember me and it was two years before the butler ever remembered Joseph but but when he did he walked up into the palace in to his moment yeah. Amen. Uh, even Jesus had layers to his moment that would become the cross, the death, and the resurrection. Amen. He had layers. What do you mean he had layers? He had layers. You remember when he was in the garden and he prayed, Father, if there be any other way that I can save the world, if there be any other way to do this, let this cup of bitterness and torment, let it pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will because on the outer layer in the natural realm the humanity of Jesus didn't want to suffer the humanity of Jesus didn't want to go to the cross but buried <laughs> ah, buried in the beating buried in the whipping buried in the nailing buried in the suffocating on the cross was a kingdom assignment that was going to change the world it was going to free man is anybody glad Jesus peeled back the See, sometimes that outer layer is hard to peel back because it deals with your will sometimes. And sometimes to, to, to confront what's going on in the natural in order to get to your kingdom assignment, you have to deal with your will. That stubborn, fleshly, I don't want to do it. 
I don't want to sacrifice. I don't want to give. I don't want to go. I don't want to be committed that. Woo. Yeah. I ain't never drunk from a coconut, but I say that outer shell is pretty hard to crack to get to the meat. I mean, all like a coconut. It's like a nut, just a hard shell nut. You don't want to crack. Ah, even Jesus had to peel back the layers to get to his assignment, to get to his moment. Uh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, can I go a little bit further? Let me give you some things to help you peel back the layers to get to your moment. Can I give you some things? Okay. Let me give you some things. Number one is this. Look at somebody and say, we're going to peel back the layers to our moment. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? We must continually, watch this, we must continually be aware that we are ambassadors. Uh, I don't know if you had 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. Did you find that in there? Hallelujah. But if you could put that up there, you must continually be aware that you are ambassadors. Now then, we are ambassadors. Now then, we are ambassadors. Can y'all read? Now then, we are for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ that be ye reconciled to God why are you telling us that we are ambassadors an ambassador listen to me children of God what is an ambassador an ambassador is a government official in a foreign land representing his government and carrying out its assignments even though you are in this natural world you cannot abandon your kingdom citizenship and the fact that you are here to do one thing and that is to rep your government the government of heaven somebody shout i'm an ambassador part of the layers that we have to peel back to get to our moments of breakthrough where everything changes is not just the layers of what's going on in the natural but it's also the layers of our identity mm. many times god almighty we never get to our moment because we never peel back the layers of our identity many times we forget who we are in the kingdom because we can't see beneath the layers of the fact that i'm a dad i'm a mom that i'm i'm this i'm that whatever your job title is sometimes the identities that become layers that hide our our true identity in the kingdom of god and keep us from our assignments because some of you don't really understand and you're not really worried about your assignment because you don't know you're an ambassador and you don't know that you're an ambassador here to carry out an assignment because you have taken on a false identity that the devil has gave you oh god some of you are carrying around identities that come from what you've been through and what you haven't been healed from yet and what people have said to you that you haven't allowed god i feel my help haven't allowed god to break off of you yet but i'm here to tell somebody it's time to peel back the layer of a loser the layer of a oh god uh, the layer of a failure the layer of a, oh you're just gonna be like your uncle oh you're just gonna be like your dad Oh, you're just going to be like your mother. It's time to peel back that layer and understand there's a giant killer on the inside. Yeah. Somebody say, peel it back, God. Peel it back, God. I know I ain't supposed to be preaching like this on Wednesday. This is a Sunday morning message, uh, but we don't care what day it is. Hallelujah. Uh, understand that David didn't miss his moment because he was able to peel back the layers of not only his natural assignment, but his natural identity. He could have said in this moment, wait a minute, I'm just a shepherd boy. <laughs> I'm the son of Jesse. I'm just here to check on my brothers. I'm just here to bring word back to my father. I'm not here to fight a giant. 
But David peeled back the layers of what his father told him to do. He peeled back the layers of who he had always been. And he realized in this moment his assignment. And in that he discovered his moment. Is anybody ready to discover your moment? But understand something. The, the, we cannot forget. Oh, I'm about to preach. Hallelujah. We cannot forget what happened prior to this. Prior to this, that helped David peel back the layers to his moment. What happened? After David was anointed to be king of Israel by the prophet, he come and poured oil on him. He didn't get anointed and go to the throne. Oh, I need to help somebody right here. He got anointed and went back to the smelly, nasty shepherd's fields. Only, only now he was covered in oil. Oh, God. Uh, see, you got to understand something. After you're anointed, after hands are laid on you, after you fall in the floor, guess what? Uh, you'll get back up and go back to work. <laughs> oh God, am I talking to anybody? After you come into one of these electrifying services and the glory of God falls and you get drunk for 45 minutes and you can't stand up straight and you can't talk and you see visions of angels and you see fireballs and you see all of this stuff, guess what? You get back up on Monday morning and you go back to work. You go back to taking care of them kids. You go back to cooking dinner. You go back to paint. Is anybody with me in this place? Yeah. Am I preaching to anybody? And some Sometimes it's a little bit discouraging because we get these great prophecies and we have these great moments and these great experiences like David did when the prophet came and prophesied over him and poured oil on him. And we, we have these moments just to go back to the same old thing. Oh, God. <laughs> but can I tell somebody tonight, uh, don't get discouraged uh, I'm gonna help somebody don't get discouraged if you have an experience and the anointing comes and gifts begin to rise up and stuff gets deposited in you don't get discouraged if everything looks the same because it was there when David went back to the familiar place in the shepherd's field, it was there that the layers to David's moment begin to get peeled back. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, because I'm talking to you, I'm saying this to you. He went back to what was familiar. He went back to what was the same, but he wasn't the same. I, am I talking to anybody? I, I know you come into these services and you get drunk and prophesied over and laid out and then you go back to work but can I tell you you're not going back the same as anybody know what it is ah, you may be in the same job but you ain't the same person you may be in the same marriage but you ain't the same person you may drive the same car but you ain't the same <laughs> so here's David and he's going back to the same thing. But he's not the same. And he found out in that moment that I'm just, I'm not just covered with oil to be covered with oil. He found out I'm covered with the anointing. He found out I'm anointed and appointed. Why? Because of what confronted him when he went back to the same thing. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. I don't know if anybody hears what I'm talking about. When he went back to the shepherd's field, there was a lion and there was a bear that came up and tried to get the sheep. Oh, but David found out something different came over him this time. And he grabbed that lion oh, by the mane and he whooped him. He grabbed that bear with his bare hands and tore him into, come on somebody. Oh, he may have went back to the same thing, but he wasn't the same. But don't miss what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that what he confronted 
when he went back to the same thing revealed to him now wait a minute I'm not the same rejected shepherd boy that got called up to the church service <laughs> come on somebody hallelujah what oh man uh, see, see, you need to understand that before you can ever kill your Goliath and discover your moment, you've got to kill the lion and the bear at work in your home. It, come on, somebody. I don't know if I, if you know what I'm talking about, but before you can kill that demon of addiction in the city and discover your moment, you got to kill that addiction in your house. Come on, before or you can whoop the devil in chief it. you gotta put him under your feet at work baby God almighty why 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 see because the reason David could peel back the layer of the shepherd boy and Jesse's son and understand I'm a giant killer is because when he went back to what was familiar after he was anointed, what he was confronted with in the familiar revealed to him what he was anointed and appointed for. Oh. See, what I'm saying to you is that what you're going through right now after you've come out of these services and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and you've been prophesied over and you've been drunk and you've been filled and refilled and refilled and refilled and the devil has brought all of hell against you. You need to understand that it's not there to take you out. It's there to make you find out how anointed you are and what you're, is anybody believing in this house? Somebody say, devil, you're just here to show me who I am. So bring it on, buddy. I'll kick you in the teeth. I'll punch you in the stomach. I'll throw you over my shoulder and walk on because I'm anointed for this. <laughs> so, I, I may be anointed. And nothing may have changed around me, but something's changed in me. And so now, my life and what I'm confronting now is revealing to me who I am. Because when I confronted this before, this didn't come out. It's the everyday battles that you're facing in the familiar places that's helping you to peel back the layers and discover your identity and therefore your assignment and therefore your moment. Don't fail to realize that God is not just giving you victories in this moment. That's not what they are. If all you see this battle as is a victory and you come out and praise God for it and you never learn from it, then it was a wasted battle. But these victories are here for you to set back and take a moment and reminisce and say, who was that woman that was praying back then? Who was that man that was quoting scriptures like, oh, that must be who I am now. That must be my new idea. Come on. Does anybody believe that God's trying to reveal to you who you are? Yeah. <laughs> Can I go a little further? Yeah. It's all right. Can you give me about 10, 15 more minutes of your attention? Come by Shanta. Somebody said we got to peel back the layers. To get to our breakthrough moments our pivotal moments and here's how you're going to peel back the layers you've got to quit giving in to the pressure to please man instead of God David could not be more concerned with daddy's will for him than God's will David would have never peeled back the layer of the natural 
and the identity of the shepherd boy and discovered the giant killer on the inside and encountered his moment had be, he been more pressured to please his earthly father than his heavenly father. Let me help you deal with the issue of giving in to the pressure of man that keeps your identity and assignment covered up and keeps you from your moment. The issue you're dealing with is not the person on the outside, but the fear going on on the inside. You need to deal with the fear of man. Oh, God. Can I just deal with the fear of man real quick? Can I just kick that devil out of here tonight? Uh, Proverbs 29 and 25. It says, the fear of man bringeth a snare. What does that mean? That means the fear of man is a trap. When you fear man, when you fear man, which manifests in this desire to please man. Because you fear what they're going to think if you don't. You fear what they're going to say if you don't. It is a trap. It's a snare. It entraps you. It contains you and keeps you from stepping into your kingdom assignment. No, oh, I could preach all night on that, but I, I just want you to see that it's a trap. Oh, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Oh, what does that mean? That means that when you trust the Lord and don't worry about what man thinks, God says you're going to be all right. You're going to be safe. That word safe comes from a Hebrew word that means too high for capture. Oh, God. Somebody tell the devil I'm too high for capture. Oh, if you will trust in the Lord and go ahead and step out in what God's called you to do and not worry about what man thinks, God says, I will put you in a place where man can't touch you. Just ask the Hebrew boys who went into the fire and came out not even smelling like some. Just ask Daniel who slept on a lion's paw, baby. You got a God that'll take man's hand off of you if you'll trust him. That's, that's my jab. Psalms 27 1 get back here devil I ain't done with you the Lord David said oh God is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid David was saying here I don't have to fear man and give in to the pressure to please man because the Lord not man is my light my salvation and my strength if man was all of these things to me then I'd fear him and I'd worry about pleasing him is anybody with me in this place but since you ain't my strength and you ain't my keeper and you ain't my healer and you didn't go to hell for me and you didn't get up on the third day for me I don't care what you think about my preaching I don't care what you think about my church I don't care what you think about what I'm doing for God cause you're not my strength he is I can make it without you but I can't make it without God The reason man has so much power and control over some people is because you're giving them that power. You're giving them too much credit in your life. They didn't die for you. And if they leave you tomorrow, you'll be all right. Yeah. But understand, I'm about to uppercut the devil and knock him out. 
that these two verses these two verses don't mean anything to you unless you get a hold of first john 4 18. first john 4 18 says there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love love casts out fear you will fear man and give in to the pressure to please man if you don't have a revelation of how much God loves you. Because if you don't believe God loves you, then you'll not trust him to make you safe or too high for capture. Nor will you trust him to be the strength of your life. And therefore, you'll have no reason to not fear man and you'll stay trapped. But when you understand how much this God loves you and what he has done for you and that unconditional love, it'll cast fear. Somebody, somebody ring the bell. It's over, baby. I ain't even counting to ten. It's over. Does anybody believe God loves you? Come on, somebody. And because he loves you, he'll keep you safe. Because he loves you, he'll strengthen your life. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is why David had no problem peeling back the layer of being Jesse's son and conquering any fear of his earthly father being disappointed in him. All right. he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't care if his father was disappointed in him. Why? Because of this right here. See, let me, let me preach. Can I preach this to you? I got one more thing to give you. Know, we'll get out of here. But there's clues to what I'm about to tell you in scripture. But you kind of have to study Jewish history and you come to understand that David is most likely either the illegitimate son of Jesse through a relationship with a woman that was not his wife and wasn't a Jew, or he was the son of a relationship that Jesse's wife had with somebody else that was not a Jew. Because what Jew is ruddy, redheaded. Ah. And so, because of this, either way it happened, Jesse was ashamed of David. This is the whole reason why he's the baby of the family, but he's sent to the shepherd's field. You don't send the baby to do the work. The baby's supposed to get coddled and, and spoiled. But David was the baby, but he was sent to the shepherd's field. Why? Because Jesse was ashamed of him. The whole family was ashamed of him because he represented this, this, this scandal that went on in Jewish culture. Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? So they sent him to the shepherd's field. Oh, God, help me, Jesus, not to preach on this. I got to get to something else. But, but they sent him to the shepherd's fields because they were hoping he'd get eaten by a lion or a bear oh, God. but instead of what they thought was going to take him out what was supposed to take him out just peeled back the layer to his own. come on somebody is anybody hear me in this place what was supposed to take him out just caused him to see who he was was rejected they were ashamed of him they so when the prophet came and said we're about to anoint one of your sons to be the next king Jesse was so ashamed of David that he didn't even invite David to the house he wasn't invited to the church service huh are you hearing me but oh somebody say but when all of the brothers passed by whew, and they were all rejected by God and the prophet. When all of the bigger, better, 
stronger, more handsome brothers passed by and the oil would not flow. And the prophet said, God has rejected all of these. The prophet looked at Jesse and said, Jesse, is there another son? <laughs> Oh, you ain't hear me. Come on, I know it's late, but but he said, is there another son? There's got to be another son because God sent me to anoint one of your sons and none of these are it. So you got to be hiding somebody. There's got to be another one. And to the shock and the dismay of Jesse, Jesse was forced to admit that he had another son named David in the shepherd's field. And watch what the prophet said. The prophet said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to all wait until he gets here. And so what Jesse rejected, God made the guest of honor. Come on, does anybody know what it is to be the rejected by man, but honored by the Lord? Come on, somebody. Man may have rejected me, but God said, come on. So, so when David saw that his earthly father rejected him, but God sent a prophet to his house to call him out of the rejection and then anointed him in front of all his brothers for the throne of Israel. Well, children of God, it was no contest to David. When David got there and discovered his assignment, there was no contest between whether or not he was going to please Jesse or please the father. He said, Jesse never loved me anyway. Jesse stuck me out there to die. Jesse was ashamed of me, but God showed up and pulled me. Is anybody glad? God showed up to your rejected place. And so when he does that, it's no contest who I'm going to please. I'm going to please the one who's chose me. <laughs> there will be God, but I shan't die. Mama, we'll have to edit this out later. I know we can't edit Facebook Live, but there was people that didn't want me, didn't want my kind of preaching, didn't want me even here in this, but all my ministry people didn't want me. People didn't like me, but I always remembered this. People never called me. People never delivered me. People never filled me with the Holy Ghost. People never put a joy in me. People never got the devil out of me. People never came to me at three o'clock in the morning when I didn't think I was going to make it, but come to my bedside and gave me strength to make it enough. People never did. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to please him because he chose me. You can't fire me because you didn't hire me. You could not like me. You could not want to work with me. You can talk to the boss about me, but you better be sure you're talking right because he said, woe unto them that offends one of my little ones. It'd be better for you to have a rock tied around your neck and cast into the sea than offend one of my little ones. So if the boss likes me, you better like me. Hallelujah. Because he's the one that chose me. He's the one that I know. I don't care what. Kick the devil in the face. I don't care what man says. God loves me. God chose me. Finally, let me, let me end with this. Once we get past, this is the last thing I'm going to say, once we get past the layer of our natural identity 
and assignments and we discover who we are do you know that we can get stuck on the layer of our assignment right. never really accomplishing what God wants and therefore peeling back that layer and getting to our moment and one of the reasons is and this is another man issue are you are you with me I'm gonna close with this another reason is because we have to deal with Eliab's I don't know why I'm dealing with this I'm, I don't know why I'm saying this I don't know who this for this may only be for one person but I'm gonna say it we have to deal with Eliab's what are Eliab's can you put verse 28 up there Tosh and Eliab David's eldest brother heard when David spake to the men when he was asking them about Goliath and the Bible says Eliab's anger was kindled against David and he said why have you come here and where have you left those sheep? who cares about sheep when your nation is in battle with an enemy who cares let me add this what are you prioritizing over kingdom stuff that's keeping you from walking in God's will for your life and therefore not discovering your moment We're prioritizing insignificant stuff. With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? He says, I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart. You've come down that you might see the battle. Watch me, please. Oh, God. What are Eliab's? Eliab's are the people that question your intentions. Oh, I'm going to kick this devil too. Come here, devil. You spirit of Eliab, come here. You're just here to watch a fight, David. You don't really care about what's going on in Israel. You don't care about the nation. All you care about is getting to see a fight. Here is what the devil does when he puts Eliabs in your path. Those that question your intentions. Those that say, oh, you're not going to that church to go to that. You're not singing to, for the Lord. You're doing that so people will see you. You're doing that for this reason. And you're doing that for that reason. Here, Listen to me. When you're dealing with Eliabs that are constantly questioning and commenting on your intentions... Here's the trick of the enemy. He wants to put Eliabs in your life that comment on and question your intentions because he wants to distract you. He wants to distract you with a fight that you're not supposed to be in. A fight. You're supposed to be fighting with Goliath, but you have been tricked into this fight with Eliab where you're constantly trying to prove your intentions by what you say or what you do or what you don't say. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to jump up there and do anything because I don't want them to think that I'm being overbearing. I don't want them to think that I'm full of pride. Or if I'm going to do something for the Lord, I got to spend 15 minutes apologizing for myself and why I'm doing this. Because I'm fighting this fight against this Eliab and a half the time Eliab ain't even real. He's an imagination of your mind because you've got some insecurities that you never got delivered from. That's too, I, I can't get into that. It's too late. It's too late. Whew. So you're fighting. You're fighting this fight. Trying to prove your intentions. 
You're never fully obeying God because you're not doing what you're doing. I'm sorry. You're never fully obeying God because you are doing what you're doing. Always worried about what Eliab thinks about your intentions. But this is what you have to understand about Eliab. And I'm trying to hush. No, I'm not. I'm just going to try to finish it. Hallelujah. This is what you've got to understand about Eliab. Look what it says in verse 28. Notice what he says right here. He says, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart or the wickedness of thine heart. Does everybody see that? Yeah. I know thy pride and the naughtiness of the wickedness, the evil intentions of your heart. Notice in verse 28, Eliab said, I I, I know the pride, the naughtiness, the wickedness of your heart. Now, this is a heart that God said is the reason he chose David. This is a heart that was after God's heart. But you've got to understand, Eliab's never see you the way God sees you. You're fighting with a blind man. You can't fight with blind. Come on, somebody. You can't fight with blind. It ain't fair. Amen. <laughs> but Eliab said, watch what Eliab said. He said, I know your heart. I know your heart. In other words, Eliab done made up his mind about who David was. Yeah. You can't fight with Eliabs because Eliabs have already made up their mind about you. You cannot prove yourself to somebody that's already decided who you are. Amen. And it's interesting that Eliab is the first one that Samuel pulled up when he came to anoint Jesse's sons. He's the one Samuel noticed and said, surely this is the one that I've, that God has chosen. But God spoke back and said, no, I've rejected him because his heart's not right. Usually the ones that made up their mind about you are the ones that's really jealous of you because it seems like God chose you over them but the truth is they don't want to humble down and receive what God's got for them so they'd rather be mad at you and talk about you and scandalize you than to do oh somebody tell Eliab you better get out of my face devil you better get out of my face you're not going to keep me back from my moment oh, somebody give God a praise for your moment. Here, here, here's what you got to do with it live. You got to do what David did. Are you ready? All right, oh man, I got to hush. Uh, uh, Eliab, Eliab said that. Whew, I feel, look, I feel the Holy Ghost. Eliab said that. Verse 28. I'm sorry, verse 29. Can you, can you put that up? <laughs> verse 29. David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Look at verse 30. Verse this. And he turned from him. Oh, God. I don't even have to read the rest of the verse. Does anybody see that? I know it's late, but anybody got one more phrase in them? Because sometimes you got to do what David did to Eliab. Eliab was over there running his mouth, done made up his mind about who David was, was jealous of the fact that God anointed him and didn't anoint him. God was using him and wasn't using him. He was preaching, but he wasn't. He was singing, but he wasn't. People were getting saved in his church, but nobody was getting saved. And David didn't fight with him. David didn't argue with him. David just turned. From somebody, somebody just do it right now. Just turn. Oh, hallelujah. What does that mean? That means I ain't going to get caught up in this fight because there's a giant that I got to focus on. Anybody believe there's a giant that the church's got to focus? And he turned. 
somebody say, and he turned from him. Let me tell you something about Eliab. He made up his mind about David. I guarantee you, until he saw that headless giant laying in that field. We don't hear nothing else from old Eliab. Is anybody with me in this place? You don't have to fight with those that's done, made up their mind. Quit fighting with people that's done, made up their mind about you. Quit replying to people's comments on Facebook who's done, made up their mind about you. Quit worrying about what people are saying. If you're going to be brave enough to post the thing, then be brave enough to ignore the comments. My God, or quit posting. Stay off of it. But you've got to turn from Elias because there's a fight that needs to be fought and it's not with somebody over your intentions. But if you will do what God's called you to do, you'll prove your intentions when somebody gets healed. You'll prove your intentions when somebody gets saved. Yes. You'll prove your intentions when somebody gets delivered. Yes, right. And all them that had their mind made up about you will come to you and say, I was wrong. Yes. And you'll say, it's all right, brother. I was wrong too one time. Hallelujah. But the Lord is graceful. And then you can lay hands on them and pray for them and they can get healed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of my greatest followers, some of my greatest supporters started out as my greatest Eliabs. But they saw that giant laying headless in the dirt. I said, maybe, maybe he is anointed. Maybe he is called by God. But David peeled back. You seeing this? David peeled back. The la I don't know why God's got me preaching these big messages with these big elaborate thoughts. I don't know. He's just doing this to me right now. Hallelujah. And this is what we're doing. I'm preaching tonight as if I was in a conference with a thousand people. Hallelujah. That's what I'm doing tonight. And I'm doing it on Wednesday night with y'all 20, 30 folk in here. I don't know how many is in here. I don't really care. But God is trying to speak something to you. The Lord is giving you something that most people are paying hundreds of dollars a ticket for and hotel expenses to go hear somebody. You're hearing it right. I'm not tooting, trying to toot my own horn, but if I don't toot it, nobody else will. Hallelujah. So I know who I am. The Lord called me and put a word in me. Hallelujah. And I'm just as good as any preacher around here or anywhere in America. You ain't got to go to no other church to find any better preaching than what you got here. And I'm training about seven of them that's going to come up in the next few years preaching just like me. And we're going to go all over the world and bring revival because we are peeling back the layers and discovering our moment. Come on, stand on your feet tonight and give him praise hallelujah this church is coming into its moment this church this church is coming into its moment it's been buried under the natural it's been held back because we've worried about the sheep and we've fought with a lie We've tried to please Jesse. But some of you right now, I've seen it so clearly when I was studying this, when I was preaching tonight, you're, you're in the familiar fighting, you're lying in lying and bear. But that's major. What you're doing in the familiar right now, what you're doing in your workplace, the demons you're fighting at home, the stuff you're fighting on your job, the stuff you're fighting every day in your familiar life, 
when you leave out of this church and go back to it, this, that is major, major, major. Don't think it's insignificant. It is major. Because what you're dealing with on an everyday basis in the familiar is peeling back the layers of what your daddy told you you were. Of what your mama told you you were. Of what society told you you were. What that failure told you were, you were. What that devil's been telling you were for e years. What you're doing in the familiar places right now. The battles you're winning. The demons that you're confronting. The prayers you're praying. And the anointing you're seeing come out in these familiar seasons. Fighting these familiar devils. It's revealing to you who you really are and what you're anointed for. And I'm telling you, you get ready. Because one day, one day Jesse's going to send you to check on the brothers. And you're going to encounter a giant. And you're going to leave him headless. You hear me? I said, you're going to leave him headless. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to leave him headless. <sighs> Lift your hands in this place. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now. <sighs> and with our hands lifted unto you, we surrender. Just surrender to him right now tonight. I just feel that in my spirit. Just surrender to him. David did. David did. The, the layers will peel back real easy if you just surrender to him. Matter of fact, let's do this by faith. Let's put your hands down. And, I, and I'm going I'm to count to three. And when I say three, I want you to lift your hands up. But I want you to do it with intent. Not just because I said. I want you to do it with intent. What's the intent? That I'm going to totally surrender like David did to God. I'm going to be a man after God's own heart. Be why? Because that will cause the layer to just... You ever have them oranges? Them good, sweet oranges that you don't even have to put a knife to it. You just stick your finger in that and, you just, and it just peels so nice and neat and easy. God says, if you'll surrender, it'll be like that. I'm just going to just easily peel the layers back. And you're going to discover your moment, your breakthrough moment, your life-altering moment. So, God, it's so amazing. Could this God be so good that he has divinely ordained and set up a moment? That I could just step in that moment and do what I'm called to do. And it alters my life forever. And I never go back to what I once was. But I got to get through the layers to get there. Are you ready tonight? With intention. With intention. I want you to do this. In this house. Are you ready? Now my eyes are closed. I, if you don't want to raise your hands. I ain't going to look. I won't know. And I won't have any kind of hidden thing in me against you. I'm not even going to look. I don't even know who does it. But if you, with intention, when I say three, I want you to lift your hands as a sign that you are totally surrendering to God so that the layers can be peeled back easily and quickly. Are you ready? One, two, three. Lift them up. I'm not even looking. Huh. That's it. That's it. You just pray your prayer. You give your worship right now. You give your worship from your heart right now to him. You, you release your tongue or your words or whatever you want to say. You give it to him right now. I'm going to give you about, I'm going to give you about a minute to just release your heart to him. Come on. Come on, release your heart to him. That's it. Come on, come on. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. Marashanda Mokaya. Mashanda Mokana Maya. Shana Monanaya. Mashana Monanaya. Mashana Monanaya. Mashana Monanaya. Mashana Monanaya. Mashana Monanaya. 
Mashana Monanai. Mashana Monanai. Mashana Monanai. Mashana Monanai. Oh. 